I'm Michael Singer, author of The Untethered Soul and The Surrender Experiment, and I'd like to welcome you to these sessions we're going to be doing together on bringing spirituality into the workplace. Because of my background, which basically I devoted myself to yoga and spirituality back when I was in my young 20s, back in 71, 72, and have kept that focus completely throughout. It has been 100% the focus of my life, and I'm now 70 years old. <laughs> and what is interesting that happened is during that journey, I didn't start that way. I moved out to the woods to meditate, and I ended up CEO of a public corporation. I never left the woods. It all grew up around me, but at one point, the corporation sold for over $3 billion and I had 2,300 employees, and it was a very large business to be running. And I started it with just me, and it grew all the way up to that. So I have a lot of experience with business, but all of my experience is really with spirituality. I see absolutely no difference between business and spirituality. I see no difference between relationships and spirituality, no difference between anything in spirituality. 100% of our lives is really about our spiritual journey, and so I want to start off with the basic question, which is, how do I make work spiritual? Everybody's teaching that sort of thing nowadays, mindfulness and how to bring spirituality into your workplace, how to find a job which inspires you spiritually. And my experience is quite different than that. My experience is that you don't make your job spiritual, you make yourself spiritual. You don't try to find a job that's spiritual. You try to find a way to work on yourself so that everything's spiritual. It's a much deeper way to work with things. And everything we're going to talk about in these sessions comes from that perspective. So to begin with, what is work? What work is to most people is an answer to problems they have. I'm not okay, so I go to work to earn money so I can enjoy the weekends, so that I can go travel, so that I can have vacations, I don't feel tremendous meaning in my life, so I go to work to feel like I'm contributing, to feel like I'm succeeding in something. I'm not sure of myself. Work gives me an opportunity to prove myself. In other words, work is about me. <laughs> work is not about work. Work is about me, what I can get from it, what it can do for me, what is my career, what is my growth path, et cetera, et cetera, of being able to prove myself and compete with others it all ends up being a place that I'm going to get something. That is not what work is. Work is the exact opposite. Work is a place I go to serve. Work is a place I go to contribute to the unfolding of the universe. A wise person gets to a point where they understand that every single thing in creation has something to give. It has a contribution. The stars, the earthworms, every cell within your body, all of these things contribute to make the whole. You are part of that. So you have a job to do. That job we call your dharma, your work. You don't have to look for it. It's right in front of you. It's always right in front of you. It's not just the fact that you get up early in the morning and go to a particular place. It's the fact that you take care of the kids. It's the fact that you contribute to the community. Whatever it is that you're doing that's being asked of you, that is put before you, is your work. So the whole attitude about work needs to go through a reset. Once you go through that reset and you understand there's not something wrong with my work, there's something wrong with me. It's just like a relationship. You don't get into a relationship because you want something from somebody that I'm not okay and somehow magically this other person is going to make me okay. You get into a relationship because you're filled with love, you're filled with joy, you're filled with excitement and you'd like to share it. Work is exactly the same. You go to work because you want to express yourself. You go to work for the same reason that an artist paints in her spare time in the woods when nobody will ever see the painting. I have something within me that wants to express itself and work is the manifestation of that expression. And someday you're gonna find out that it doesn't make any difference what you're doing. It is the expression and the act of doing it that brings about joy, that brings about fulfillment, Work is not a place that you go to get something so you can be fulfilled. Work is a place that you go that in sharing and giving, you achieve a state of fulfillment. It is an end within itself. And if you work on yourself, you will find that work is your spiritual growth. Going to work is about the holiest thing you can ever do. 
The problem is that's not where we're at. So the problem is not the work. The problem is our attitude. The problem is how we're viewing things. So how does one go about changing their view? You understand that you have to start from where you are. And where you are is what we said before. I'm not okay. And one of the things I'm trying to do to be okay is earn enough money or get enough stature or enough power or enough respect. And I do that through my work to try and be okay. You have to instead, at the core of spirituality, is to ask, why am I not okay? It's not because of work that I'm not okay. I'm not okay, that's why I went to work. <laughs> that's why I was doing my job. But basically what you're going to see is you're not okay because your thoughts are not okay. You're not okay because inside your mind you're constantly telling yourself that things are not okay. That there's problems, that things happened in the past that you didn't like. There's an entire mental dialogue going on inside that you are listening to at all times that if you put it outside and looked at it, you'd say, no wonder I'm not okay. How could I be okay with that going on? And then what you're trying to do is go to work and have it somehow distract you, have it somehow engage you to where you're not listening to all these problems you've created inside. So work is a place that you go to get rid of your problem, not to solve it. So you start to understand, I need to get rid of me. I don't need to get things for me. I'm causing myself a problem. So once you have that attitude, and that goes for everything, for your relationships, for work, for every moment of your life, if you're a wise being, you're not trying to get for yourself. You're trying to get rid of yourself. You're trying to let go of this lower aspect of your being, your personal self, that thinks the whole world is about you when it isn't. So work is a place you go to cleanse. Work is a place you go to let go of this problem that you've developed inside yourself. Well, meditation, you do it one way. Relationship, you do it another way. In work, you do it by giving. You give of yourself. But what if I don't like what I'm doing? Good. <laughs> That's very good. I'm glad. Now learn to give and let go of the part of you that doesn't like what you're doing. What if I feel that it's not spiritual and fulfilling? Then there's something wrong with you because everything is spiritual and everything is fulfilling, period. You could sweep a floor and literally be in ecstasy as you sweep the floor and see that you're cleansing something to make it so other people could have a more beautiful experience. In fact, that's what you should be feeling with everything you do. If you are not feeling that, which is an honest statement, I wish I could be there, but I'm not, that's what people say, then you work on yourself. You do the work that's necessary to get there. And your place of employment, your place of work is an excellent place to do that. So the first thing you do to try and achieve these states, to set the foundation for what I call spiritual work, which is all work, is when you pull up in the parking lot, you don't get out of your car to you get your head straight. Every single time you stop and you realize, I am not going here to get something. I am going here to give of myself and in the process, let go of the part of me that is causing trouble throughout my entire life let go of the part of me that's not letting me give of myself, that's so judgmental and so conditional that everything has to be exactly the way I think it needs to be for me to get turned on. I don't want everything to have to be the way I want to get turned on. I want to get turned on by everything. So my work is to let go of myself. So first you center in your car and you remember, this is not about getting something for myself. It is about giving of myself and letting go of the part of me that not letting me do that. Then you go into the workplace, and one thing I used to do, because what's going to happen is you can maintain, at least get your center for a moment, but you'll go in there and you're going to find that work hits your stuff. Other people are getting jobs you wish you had. People are saying things to you, criticizing that you don't want to listen to. Things aren't exactly the way you want. It's going to happen every moment, all the time, throughout your workday. Good. You need to embrace that. You need to understand that that's the nectar of life, that you have this problem inside, and while you have the problem, things are going to hit it. And so every time it hits it, it gives you an opportunity to let it go. The problem is you have to be centered. You have to maintain this state of mindfulness to remember that that's what's going on. Otherwise, when something happens that disturbs you inside, you're going to try and protect yourself. You're going to try and argue. You're going to try and think I need a new job. You're going to go through everything that buys into that I got disturbed and I shouldn't have. The answer is if you have things inside of you that can get disturbed, then you should get disturbed. 
because it stirs it up and gives you an opportunity to let it go. So I used to say, if you don't show up for work, you can't do the work. Well, your inner work, if you don't show up and be there, you can't do that work. So you need to find a way to be conscious enough, centered enough, every moment of the day that you remember, I am here to let go of myself and I am here to serve what is put before me and I'm here to let go of the part of me that won't let me do that. So I used to, for example, every time I would walk through a doorway, every time I'd open up a door, just through the day, you open many doors, I would stop for a second, just a second, doesn't take time, and I would remember I am sitting here on a planet spinning around in the middle of absolutely nowhere's an empty space walking through a door. I would bring myself back to the present moment and embrace the entire universal aspect of what's happening. And I am here to serve. And if the phone would ring, I would see all the company. I had millions of phone calls, all right, all big. I wouldn't pick up a phone, not a single time in all those 20 odd years. I would not pick up a phone without stopping and remembering I'm sitting on the top of planet Earth about to pick up a phone and talk to somebody. It becomes comical to think it's a problem to handle a phone call. Bring yourself back to center and you remember the purpose of this phone call is to see if I can serve, is to see if I can lift the energy that has presented itself to me and if any part of me gets upset, if any part of me gets scared, any part of me gets desirous, I'm letting it go. I'm staying here, I'm relaxing through it so that I can serve the moments before me. That is the proper way to go to work. If you learn to go to work that way and you do it every single day, regardless, you're going to find that work is more spiritual than meditation. You meditate so that you learn to stay present even though your mind is giving you trouble. Once you learn to stay present, it is the everyday moment of your life, of which work is half your life, that presents you the opportunity to let go of yourself.